And that dog will hunt on your chest, just like Jeff Halfley will hunt as the new defensive coordinator for the Green Bay Packers. I think a lot of us, Ty Schmidt, whenever we heard that the Green Bay Packers were hiring the Boston College head coach, we said, oh, Boston College, real powerhouse. Hey, great football right. That feels like a good play. But then you start doing a little bit of research, and it's like, oh, the Green Bay Packers weren't the only team that were hoping for Jeff Halfley to return to the NFL and join them. Then we heard clips of Richard Sherman back whenever Halfley was leading the San Francisco 49ers defense, and here's what Richard Sherman had to say about him. We're going back to Halfley, now you had a full season to work with him, get to know him, how he operates. Uh, what has impressed you uh, about him? His preparation is, is, is some of the best I've seen. You know, I've had some great defensive back coaches, some great defensive coaches, defensive minds, um, and he's right up there. He's with his preparation and how he breaks down film and how easy and simple he makes the game plan sound and how easy he makes it for guys to understand. Like He paints a, a very vivid picture of, of what you're going to see, and, and it's all about executing. Like I've, I've tried to explain to you guys over and over, Like they, they give us the plays a lot of times. A lot of times they prepare us really well. And I think the immediate reaction was the shit on the Halfley hiring, but then as we did more research, maybe the Packers got it right here, Ty. You pumped up about this. Yes, I am excited. Like you said, when you first hear it, because uh, I do remember when you know Jeff Halfley was the the DC of or co DC of Ohio State in 2019, and they went from like 50th back up to number one. But it was it was kind of out of nowhere because the Packers had interviewed you know like six or seven guys, and I think most fans were. You see what's going on in Baltimore. They brought in Baltimore's linebackers coach and D backs coach, and it's like, well, their defense is so good. You maybe want a young guy, up and comer, to to kind of do this. But but then yeah, the more you look at it, it's like Halfley is a NFL guy. He's he's has plenty of experience in the league. You talk about the players who respect him, and. I mean, I was talking to a source last night who basically said, "What does source sound like?" Uh, he sounded a bit like this, kind of, kind of from the Boston area, who who mm. maybe knows Jeff Halfley uh, uh, pretty well. Uh, he's a good dude, schematically very, uh, very respected. So, uh, but he said that Halfley basically was vetted a couple years ago for a head coaching job in the NFL, and that he thinks if he wouldn't have went this year then there's a chance that within the next couple of years, like he was going back to the NFL. And then you see his philosophy. He likes playing press coverage. He's very, you know, I mean, he very aggressive. And that's kind of been the knock on the Packers. At least it was with Joe Barry. All the time they're getting in these third and longs. And then you got cornerbacks playing 15 yards off the ball and teams just marching right down the field. So it does kind of seem like a complete culture change. So easy to kind of shit on it right away because, yeah, he's the Boston College head coach and it's like, Maybe there are other candidates in the NFL who are a little bit more established, but I'm I'm very happy with this. Kind of off the beaten path, but I think it's good. Good for you. Owner of the Packers mm -hmm. there. Maybe the defense will be able to hold up its end of the bargain with Jordan Love obviously being a phenomenal young talent who's going to lead them for the next few years. New D.C. in Green Bay, A.J. You're only the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. I assume whenever you're watching Green Bay Packers games, you're watching it through the eyes of a middle linebacker and through the linebacking core. Joe Barry, obviously a person of uh, conversation on this particular program because Ty Schmidt was done with his shit all year, even though they put their best two games on tape, the last two games of the season. How do you feel about the hire of Halfley out of Boston College, and what do you think this means for the Packers team going forward I think I mean people don't really know and not a whole lot of people don't know halfway that well I know he spent a year at Ohio State and I got to talk to him uh, multiple times when he was there and, and stay in touch with him he's an impressive dude now everyone loves how aggressive he is how aggressive his scheme is like we were get up we're gonna bump and run we're gonna disrupt the routes we're gonna make sure we like take it to the offense so of course that is what people would love to hear and I think it'll be on him getting there and trying and really catering his scheme and what he does to the talent and the people they have on that roster. And seems like a good hire, man. It really does. I know, at least from the interactions I've had with him and guys that have played for him, they're all big fans and say he's a great coach. Buddy, though, hiring somebody out of Boston College to, yeah. to people that don't do – the immediate reaction was – Oh, yeah, the Eagles. They're a good team. Of course. Yeah, Boston College. That's who we, we should be looking for. To we see this happen more. More oh, like yeah. Yeah, coordinators nice. in college taking – or head coach in college mm -hmm. taking coordinator gigs in the NFL. So, allegedly, okay, allegedly that is the narrative right now. And we asked – I asked Sharon more about it because, like, the old guard of college football or – even maybe some of the newer guard of college football who are getting these opportunities or had these opportunities are realizing what the world is and what the reality of the situation is. And all of a sudden they say, we get to the top of the mountain, but the view is nowhere near as good as we thought it was going to be. And Saban told us earlier in the year that the NFL lifestyle right now for coaches... <laughs> 
a little bit better. Much better <laughs> yeah. than what the college <laughs> lifestyle is for coaches. So I assume that's going to provide a lot of opportunity for new coaches in college. But I think they should try to stop the bleeding a little bit to maybe make it a little bit more appetizing to remain in college well, football. Well, think about it. I mean, he, he coaches and recruits his dick off, okay, to, to develop these players and get these players into his program. And if you're a middle-tier Power 5 program like Boston College is, if any of these players turn out to be good, one of the top programs is going to come in and pay him much more money. So then all your work that you just did went right out the door. And then You're a you're, minor league team. Yeah. Bingo. Mm-hmm. Pretty much feeding the big schools. That's yeah. kind of how it's Screw that. Up. I'm out of here. Yeah, I, I can see how you wouldn't want to do that. Always anymore. scraping by to try to get some more money as well. Like you're always, always fundraising. on whoever the groups are. Yeah, hey, we need – you guys want to win more games? I need to help. I need some money to bring in some of these players. That's just what it is right now. I think you embrace that. Like well, you would have to. You, I mean, you, if you, you yeah. have to embrace that because if you can go <laughs> get a few, get you, money. if you can go get a few of those dudes and develop them, and then somebody comes and gives them a million dollars to go to Alabama to go to Georgia, okay, I'm good with that. I just go get the other dude out of the you know that portal. becomes your it's recruiting. Free, that's how I'm going to do it. And some teams are going to have the ability to build to the draft. The draft is high school. Okay, for colleges right now. And then get a chess piece here and there for needs, based on needs every year, right out of the portal. But guys like that, I'm, a, I'm good with that. If I'm a, uh, what is it, FCS or FB, FCS? The one double A's, not know. FCS. Yeah. yeah. You know, so whatever, I'm doing that. I'm developing the crap out of that and saying, and then having a guy go here, a guy go there, get paid. How do you feel about NIL. all these coaches kind of bitching about the new state of college football? And they're not bitching publicly, but people are bitching for them, seemingly, uh, behind closed doors, about how there's no regulations on anything. There's no standards for well, anything. Well, it's coming. They just got to weather the storm because they got to, they got to, the wild, wild west as it is right now, everybody uses that, that, way to describe it they got to do something and I think a guy like Halfley who's been in the in the NFL he spent time in the NFL most of the college guys that are there are going to stay because they haven't you know experienced that mm-hmm. lifestyle that way of coaching five weeks off in the summer they just don't know any better <laughs> he, he's been there he knows so, listen to the first thing he said yeah. five, mm-hmm. five weeks off in the summer like I was yeah. good for they eight, don't know that like 18 a... years I, w- I was great because I didn't know any better. I loved recruiting, had my maps out. We didn't have GPS. I, I mean, I'm okay. We know. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Barely had cars. Yeah, we, and we know that that thing started. Yeah. 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 Come on, push it. You know, push it. it. You know, see so this, you know, what you don't know, you don't know. 